I am so excited. I am so excited, so happy. Seeing familiar faces and names. So Kumo, would you like to open with Puli first or? I thank you. I many na ki aloha e kako a pau. Eio, eio, eku e manu e e alua kunei kapule a kalau kuli a kani a uli a namu a namu e a nehi luna a nehi lalo a kau a he ma kuma kani a ikalani e kuli a ka a ikalani kau ila nui ma ke a ikalani. Pane Kalan, Eola Kekana, O my Kaloe, a Kai, a Kamana, Ia Ekahunwala, O Halawari, Ikahiwaiho, Ikahua, Ole, a Elikame, a Mamma, one. Mahalo Kumo. For your information, this is a talk story which is being recorded. And um, first of all, aloha and welcome. I am so, so happy for Kumu and as well as the rest of the family this evening. So I am Thelma Shimoka from the office of Maui, um, Maui Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Um, I'm with Community Engagement <clears throat> and we're finding new ways to engage and connect with community and bringing to you this virtual mana in Maoli Ola event today, this evening. And it's a great honor. This is the agenda we'll, we'll be following this evening. I'll give a quick overview of the mana in Maoli Ola workshop series. I will also introduce to our, to our speaker, introduce it to our speaker, then hand the rest of the workshop over to him. Again, I'm Thelma Shimoka, Community Outreach Coordinator under Community Engagement with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. I have been with OHA for 39 years, and it's been beautiful 39 years. It's been just an overwhelming feeling to know that the resources that we have given to our community really allows our beneficiaries to go forward and reach out to whatever they're needed. So I thank our, our Office of Foreign Affairs for all of the work that they have done. You know, it's not just me, it takes all of us, the community as well. The many people that I have uh, met along the years have been awesome. Some have already gone home, but those that are here with me are still working with me like Kapuno Ai and Eti Biki and Kelmoku and and even Wong, Mr. Wong, he's, I saw his name tonight and I was just thrilled. So um, we, as we go on, our office is located at the um, 737 Lower Main and it's currently closed due to the pandemic and staff has been tele, teleworking with modified services. So more information on that can be found on our website, www.oha.org. We are able to answer your phone calls at 808-873-3364. And of course, you see the pictures here. Roy is the first contact that you will have. And he's a great resource person. He can direct you directly to any resource that we have available here on Maui or other islands, as well as uh, federal and state. This is a talk story brought to you by OHA. Imana Maoli Ola program. Mana Imaoli Ola is an opportunity for community engagement workshops or presentations or talk stories that empower our native Hawaiian Lahui and to help to build capacity in our communities. These workshops, presentations, or talk stories are reflective of OHA's strategic foundations and strategic directions. OHA's strategic directions include Aina, Mo'omehu, Ohana, and these foundations reflect the strengths of, of our native Hawaiian communities. Aloha with the strategic foundations, OHA has four strategic directions, health outcomes, education pathways, 
quality housing, economic stability. It is through our strengths that we can achieve well-being. Mana Imauli Ola. At this time, I have the honor of introducing our instructor for today, Kumu Kapuno Ai Molitao. You know, he has a excellent, beautiful background bio. So I prefer that he share with you. And many of us who have linked our lives with him know who he is and what he does. I'm so honored to present to you Kapuno Ai Molitao. Nice to see you, even if it's uh, along this kind of uh, Zoom thread. Um, first off, I, I am really, really honored to be here and, and offer this opportunity to just share Kuana uh, Ike, to share knowledge, uh, to share Mele, to share Oli. Um, uh, with our, our topic uh, tonight being uh, Heyo. And um, also with that topic in re in regards to a specific Heyo here on Maui, uh, known as Kelaka Ihonua. All right, um, so tonight's, uh, tonight's topic of discussion is about Heyo, uh, a look in how we conduct ourselves around Heyo, within Heyo, and um, specifically around this particular space now, uh, known as Kealaka Ihonua. Um, and I'll start there by, by offering Ule for this particular space. <laughs> sure that we we um, center ourselves uh, before we we enter into a space and so uh, even in in the presentation wanting to make sure that we center ourselves and and be very mindful about our intentions for tonight about learning about uh, being being mindful about our space that we have here on Maui um, this is Kealaka Ihonua this is a space that we'll be concentrating many of our, our, our discussions for the, this evening, but also uh, we'll be looking at other other wahi around Hawaii, ko Hawaii pai aina that talk about uh, heyo or that deal with heyo. Um, in centering ourselves for for this moment and for this time, um, we always want to make sure that we honor uh, kupuna, we honor our our space of learning, and so. A little bit about myself. Um, my name is uh, John Kapono Ai Kaulike Keao Molitao. I am originally from the island of Oahu, um, born and raised on Oahu, and had the fortunate pleasure of uh, of growing up under the tutelage of uh, John Keola Makaina Nakala Huyo Kalani Kamemea Ekolu Lake, uh, who is from the island of Maui. Uh, but uh, spent majority of his uh, adult years on the island of Oahu teaching and uh, really making practitioners for a lifetime. So getting the opportunity as a young boy, um, going over to Kumu Lake's Hello and being a part of that Hello and, and understanding what it meant to, to really learn uh, Oli, really learn Pule, Pula, and all of the basics of Mia uh, Hawaii. Uh, it challenged me to, to grow up with a certain kind of um, certain kind of lens. And um, he would always tell us in um, in class, 
to look at Hawaii e through my eyes, uh, look at Hawaii e through my lens. And uh, that particular uh, kind of thought always rang true. Um, so, nana i Hawaii ku maumaka. And so, as I, I go through today's video uh, or presentation, I will, I will always refer back to Kumu Kiola and some of his teachings and, and reference point. And really mahalo that man uh, for, for all of the, the ike that he's bestowed upon us. Those of us that were fortunate enough to learn from him and continue to learn from his teachings, uh, we, we are uh, eternally grateful. So, mahalo nui oe e Kumu Kiola. So these images that you see here um, are, are some of the images of, of cultural practice that, that continue to thrive today in Hawaii. Um, the image right in the center there uh, is an image of an event known as Ho'okui Kahi uh, that, I, that I have the pl uh, pleasure and the privilege and really the honor of, of serving as Kauna Nui over that space known as Pu'ukohola. Uh, Heia on the island of Hawaii, in an area known as Kauai Hai, on the shores of Pelikane. Uh, this particular event is known as Ho'oku Ikahi. Um, we've had the pleasure and the honor to be able to uh, utilize this space for the last uh, 30, 30 years and, and really be able to continue to teach and enhance uh, those practitioners that, that are our leaders today. So. Um, folks like Ke Amoku Kapu, uh, that I believe is on, uh, and others like uh, Kaiona Kanelua, um, Kamana Okomo Crab, uh, and many others uh, have been have been very uh, influential in in the space known as Pukuola, uh, in the event known as Hokuikahi, to inspire, to, to to challenge, to to make sure that the growth and the potential for each. Uh, kanaka for each poe that come out to that space is able to be, as uh, Ke Omoku would say, um, uh, infected. And uh, if you go over to Pu'ukohola and you go to the event known as Ho'okuikahi, uh, may you be infected by, by the mana of our kupuna that, that come and visit that space. This evening, um, we're going to be going over a, a chant that was created back in uh, September 14, 2018, um, and I wanted to discuss a little bit about how this discussion of Kealaka Ihonua came around. Um, it was during a time where, where Kumu was pondering about, uh, about Heio here on Maui, and you know, we, we've all, uh, throughout, throughout Hawaii, throughout uh, the time of uh, Ho'okuikahi, Having the opportunity to go to, to Pukukohola uh, on the island of Hawaii uh, was amazing, and it is amazing uh, to, to participate in Ho'okuikahi. However, I um, kept thinking to myself, there's got to be spaces here on Maui that can be utilized for the continual uh, uh, process of pule, the continual process of coming to a space to to ho'okuikahi, to, to come together, to, to awamuke kuleana. And so in that conversation, um, I remember uh, having a, a kapukai session and, and asking Kekai, um, Kekai Robinson. And I believe her husband, Paul, was, was there. And we were sit, sitting, um, just kind of enjoying, enjoying the afternoon and, and uh, saying, wouldn't it be awesome if if we had a space or a heyo that we could utilize uh, to come together to Pule. And, uh, and Kikai uh, kind of pointed out towards, uh, we were out, um, out at Kanaha, and she was uh, pointing out towards Waihe'e, out towards Kakuloa. And said, Kumo, there's a space out there. And uh, the place is known as uh, Kealakai Honua. And, and from that point on, uh, we made an opportunity to try and uh, have a conversation with, with uh, Scott Fisher, who is part of uh, Hawaii Land Trust or Hawaii Island Land Trust. And uh, that particular conversation took place uh, about five years ago. And uh, in that conversation, uh, we, we just kind of wanted to find out what would be the possibilities of, of having a space to utilize, to, to continue to hold space for pule, to hold functional space for for Ho'okupu, et cetera. And 
and it just became a, a uh, kind of a little muo or a little budling, and then it grew from that into into a, a group or a hui known as a hui wanana to be able to have a, a think tank of folks to to discuss and to to um, come together to figure out what it would look like. Um, and then finally, um, having the Halau nonprofit Hanona uh, come into play um, to to make sure that we could get these agreements uh, put together, and and uh, here we are five years later, finally looking at, at the possibilities of of seeing this base um, become something uh, not only for Halau but for all of Hawaii and for all of uh, Maui, and making it a space where where many practitioners from many different types of, of practices can come, learn, share, offer. And so back on uh, September 14, 2018, um, these students, uh, Kikai Robinson, along with her husband, Paul, Nalani Padluski, Maile Noneza, uh, Kaleo, uh, Kaleleo Nalani Kekauha Schultz, uh, Kaui Padluski, Lani Eckhart Dodd, Kira Glover, Kale Kaalakahi, and Pimauna Aiwohi uh, helped to develop this uh, Oli Hei, uh, known as Kalakai Honua. And uh, this Oli Hei is, is the first of many Oli uh, that would be um, moving forward to, to be created uh, for the space and in around the surrounding areas. And so um, I'd like to go ahead and, and show you what the Oli Hei looks like, and then and then have you chant along with me uh, this particular Oli Hei. Um, those of you that are in Halau that have your Hei, kind of looks like this, you can kind of hanapu mea'u. So when we look at Hei, uh, we all know that Hei is um, another word that means string game. Uh, it also means to ensnare, to tangle, to entangle, and so, we utilize this olihe as the, the uh, marker for us to get centered into the space, to get entangled into the area, for, for we honor all of those, those wahi kupuna that are in that area. Um, so I'd like to share it with you now. Olihe kalaka ihonua. E kalepa e, e kalepa e. So again, this Oli Hei uh, is again one of many Oli that, that have been uh, developed for for Kealaka uh, for to Ho'omana that Wahi. And so um, I figured that we uh, can start there. Uh, let's learn this particular Oli. And then one day um, we'll get together and I'll teach you the hey part or I'll bring kids that are way better than I uh, to learn the, the hey and help teach it with kumu. So, e ano, um, here are the words. E kalepa e hu a ela ke olai kawai. Second line, kawai momona e ha The third line. Eo kapoho, eha nanui apoho ka ei, ka aina e ho o uruwe, kuo, 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 na mamo ka ihi kapu o kapo kia, kia la ka and so the translations are um, simple yet very, very uh, meaningful because of the space. 
To you, Kalepa, may the waters of life swell, the sweet waters that feed us. Calling to you, Kapoho, may the food be abundant amongst all the work that is done. And may the land be always growing. Calling out loudly to the sacred descendants of Mauna Ihi and of Kapokea. Kealakaihonua, the leader of our world, land, earth. So again, um, in the chant form of it, uh, it is a, it's a pule kahea uh, for the space. Um, so it's done with the intentions to make sure that you are centered, you are makoko, to walk into, to heo, uh, walk into this specific space known as kealaka ihonua. This particular olihe um, is one that is always done while we're out at kealaka ihonua. Uh, to make sure that we honor the space in the surrounding areas. Um, again, there are four specific sites that are there at, uh, out at Waihe'e. And the first one is honoring that place uh, known as Kalepa. So if you've ever driven out uh, to, to Kealaka Ihonua, you know that you gotta, gotta kind of go down the little hill and then you, you kind of cross um, a stream bed. That first uh, Wahikupuna is known as Kalepa. And those waters run all the way up from Mauka all the way to Makai. The next area is known as Kapoho. Uh, Kapoho is an area that is a little bit further to where that Hale is, um, a little bit uh, more towards the, I guess, Kapuna side of that Hale. Um, and that area is known as Kapoho. Uh, at one point, it, uh, it was a kalo lokuia, and we hope that one day it'll return. Uh, so we, we honor that wahikupuna as well. That mauna that um, Kapoho butts up right up against is known as uh, Mauna Ihi. It is uh, the area that we, we honor because those kupuna uh, that are resting in that space, those ivi kupuna, are really our, our warriors that have. Um, made their voices known. Uh, for what, without Mauna Ihi being there, this particular space known as, as uh, Kealaka Ihonua, Kapokea, Kapoho, um, would, not be, would not be here today. So we honor those kupuna uh, because of their, their willingness to be shown um, when those Ivi kupuna were dug up. And uh, at one point, uh, this particular space was owned by a development company that was going to change the landscape uh, of uh, this particular space, making it into a hotel as well as into a golf resort. Um, so those, those kupuna that, that live uh, and moi at Mauna Ihi, um, we are grateful for them. And so we always acknowledge them when we're there. Um, so this brings me to the point about, uh, about heyo. So the question, uh, the question is, what does heyo mean? And I think um, it is a, it's up for discussion today because uh, today it's one of those things that sometimes we, uh, those of us that grew up as little kids that never knew about heyo, uh, we were always told, uh, to stay away from those places, uh, to, to not go and venture off into those areas. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about, about that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, about the other part of that, the manna behind Heyo. And so according to Pukui, as well as Wehewehe.org, Heyo is described as pre-Christian places of worship, constructed stone platforms and other simple earth terraces. However, um, for me, the meaning and space are far more than the mere translations. Yeah. If you're thinking about heyo, again, we talked about hey, uh, what it means. It means to entangle, to absorb knowledge. And when we look at the terminology o, oh, we look at the terminology of it being a current or an energy, also a period of time. My, my thoughts of this is personal. So heiau are the living embodiment of spiritual manna, enhanced by pure supplication of prayer, focus, intentions, 
and the uplifting of mana for the collective community and the mauliola, the well-being of a society. That's what heyo is. And to simply put it in today's term for everybody to understand, heyo is simply our church. And if you can acknowledge that, no matter what church you go to, then you know the importance of heyo. It's that similar kind of equivalent. These are just very uh, real simple mana'o for ho hopefully for everybody to kind of just chew on. Now there's many, many other layers of that um, to go into, but tonight I wanted to be able to at least share with you uh, the, the mana'o behind heyo. What does it mean? Um, why is it so important? Again, um, when we think about, about pule, and when we think about the mana of pule and uh, where those, those mana are, are focused at, the intentions usually are focused at heyo. Similar to when you pule yourself, uh, your intentions are, are, again, if you're in a Kalikiano kind of atmosphere, your intentions are, are at hale pule. Yeah. So similar thought. When we think about Halepule again, looking over here to the right, um, this is one of the biggest Halepule in all of Hawaii. This is known as Pu'ukohola Heyo again. And this is an event um, known as Ho'okuikahi. Um, this particular event right here is the Aha Ho'okupu. This is where uh, many uh, take the opportunity uh, for the entire year to prepare themselves to come to Ookuikahi to to pule for those that that are now just beyond the veil to pule for those that they have lost throughout the year and then to come back to this particular space and to offer their their hookupu and their best intentions for for their their hui their hala their uh, hui lua, uh, their mea pule, or them as just poe kanaka. Um, these particular um, spaces allow for, for those intentions to happen. And so this particular um, aha hookuikahi is done on the Saturday morning, um, and it's usually done right, right before sun uh, sunrise. And if you look at this particular picture, it's about about 7.30 in the morning. And you can see the, the sun that is just amazingly blazing on, on the faces in the kino of our Po'e Kanaka. Um, and here at, Kela, uh, here at Pukohola, um, there at Pelikane, uh, their, their mana is, is something to behold. And so, for anybody that, that has an opportunity to go to Hale Pule, you understand that mana is, is an amazing space. So to take that time and place out here at one of the most amazing uh, Wahi Pule, uh, Wahi La'a, um, Puhola is, is one of those spaces. Again, when we're talking about, about Heyo, uh, we're talking about uh, lifestyles, we're talking about the, the way we conduct ourselves. Uh, we're talking about uh, the opportunity to live within the space uh, to, to be a part of and to enhance our kuana ike. So these are some of the images that have, um, have gone on throughout the year uh, to be able to, to acknowledge space and intentions. Um, the, the first image there right on the top center is a uh, is an image of Ho'okuikahi over at Kalakai Honua. Uh, this past year, um, the Ho'okuikahi events were unable to happen over at Pukuhola Heiau uh, due to the National Park Service closing for, uh, due to COVID. And so here on Maui, um, having the opportunity to offer pule uh, for the, for the, the continual uh, for the, the commitment of those that continue to, to come to Ho'okuikahi, to continue to pule for our kaya ulu and for our, our kohave ipaya'ina. This is uh, that particular event uh, that was held during the same time of Ho'okuikahi in August. Um, 
looking over to your right, if you're seeing Uncle Bill, this is Uncle Bill Garcia. He's one of our most uh, uh, senior uh, mea pule, mea oli in Halo. And, um, and the reason why, why I bring him uh, and honor him uh, as much as I can is um, Uncle Bill um, has been with Kumu for now going on 17 years. And uh, he returned um, from the mainland, uh, from being in the mainland for such a long time. Uh, he, is, he is born and raised in Waikapu. Um, and being, um, you know, I, I think he was in the Marine Corps, I believe. Um, but being in the military for such a long time and then living there and raising his family there and coming home, um, it was the later part of his life. And uh, this this young man, um, Uncle Bill, is is one that continues to to uh, push uh, his his um, his learning. He never stops learning. And so for Uncle Bill to learn this this oli hei, it's difficult for for me as a makua. Uh, for some kupuna, it was, it's really difficult as well. So to have him um, go ahead and learn and, and know the oli and, and be a part of it, it's, it's really a thrill. But for him, it's, uh, it's knowing that these pule thrive not only at, at places like Pukohola, but they thrive here at places like Kealaka uh, Moving downwards in that clockwise position, um, you know, the concept of, of Kalaka Ihonua um, in the space around it um, doesn't, doesn't stop with just the, the Wahipule or the peak of the Heiau, but all of the areas around it. So the areas of Aloha Aina and Malama Aina uh, really uh, have to thank uh, Hawaii Land Trust, uh, Laura Ka'akua uh, and her team, uh, Scott Fisher, James Crow, Kia'i Collier. Uh, for allowing for space to come to, to Aloha Aina and Malama, uh, those, those particular spaces in Wahine. That one picture right below that um, is of a workshop of a lehulu. Um, during this time of the pandemic, um, I think every Kumu knows that, that uh, it's hard to stay, stay stagnant and it's hard to stay still. And we have, you know, we have students and ohana that, that want to continue to learn and want to continue to push their, their learning potentials. So um, these types of workshops are, are provided for our students to, to be able to know that they're going to be part of, of ceremony. They're going to be part of your attire, your a'ahu, uh, that allows you to be in that space. Um, so this particular workshop, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the completion uh, of some of these beautiful lehulu uh, that are, are now being completed. Um, moving on into that middle section of the picture, there is a workshop that was held uh, over at uh, Kapokea, um, out at Kanakaihonua area. And, and this workshop was a hula ki'i workshop. And all of these beautiful hula ki'i were taught by Kumu Auli'i Mitchell from the island of Oahu. Uh, originally from uh, island of Hawaii, his Ohana is from. Uh, we did this over the course of a, a weekend, uh, this workshop, and then uh, the students were, were uh, sent back with Kuliana to, to finalize their particular hula ki'i. Now there's um, a, an oli that was written for this particular hula ki'i out at, uh, out at Kalaka Ihonua that speaks about the hau bush that is uh, very uh, prevalent out, out there. And uh, so that oli was written by uh, Kikai Robinson and these ki'i images um, were, were utilized for hula. And they were taught by Kumu Auli'i uh, to go ahead and, and utilize these ki'i to um, ho'omana, to bring um, spiritual awareness to the space as well as to those those kinds of elemental pieces that make us who we are. So um, that Hau Bush uh, area was honored and, um, and Kekai Robinson wrote a beautiful mele uh, entitled Ku Kahauakea. Right below uh, is an image of, I believe, no, Novel uh, Kekauha Schultz and uh, also Penny Levin. Um, 
out at the aina that is just mauka of mauna ihi and and penny goes ahead and takes care of that aina um to to ola that space uh, so that we can utilize it for uh for not only our kayo ulu but for future ceremonies as well as feeding um feeding aqua the next picture those two that you see right to the left of that um are our key lepa lepa uh, that were created or are being created now uh, for for use of ceremony or in ceremony and these four key lepa lepa that you see uh, were created by kekai robinson uh, the one that duki is holding is the one that uh, he started on and then the ones to the left um, are those completed uh, key lepa lepa that will be utilized for ceremony uh, out at Kealakai Honua. I believe that there were a dozen that were requested to be completed. And whenever you see ki lepa lepa um, erected onto to, to types of kahili, it means that something's going on. It means that something is, is uh, uh, about to happen. It means uh, to look in the directions of where your kupuna are, are calling you from. So if you look at the ki lepa lepa, they are blowing in a certain direction, and that is the direction that the Kamakani is blowing. And again, we we honor these Kilepa Lepa and all the hands that create, created them. The other image, again, is another image of, of the Hulaki'i that were created. Um, and then finally an image of, of some of our Po'ehaumana uh, after ceremony as Pau um, over, over at Kealaka'i Honua. One of the things that, that many of us that, that go to Pu'ukohola, to that heiau, to Ho'okui Kahi, is um, the way it makes us all feel after we've plugged in uh, to, to these kinds of ceremonial spaces. And, and so we're really, really, uh, really thrilled to be able to plug into these kinds of places and knowing that they exist for, for not only us, but for all of our kaya'u. Okay, so moving on into to another series of images. Uh, those would be kinds of uh, thoughts and, and, and uh, statements that, that I would get from Kumukiola. And, and you would, you would kind of understand what he, he meant by, by what are those responsibilities that you carry out. This past year, uh, during, um, during the time of COVID, um, we we're very fortunate to, to get uh, CARES Act funding money uh, to to help um, help in the efforts of bringing uh, bringing families back to work. Again, many of us have all known or know of Ohana that during this time of the pandemic might have either lost work or wasn't able to put food on the table, and and those kinds of things uh, really really pulled at my na'au uh, day in and day out. The CARES Act funding came really quickly. The turnaround time was 60 days. When the approval was given, um, we had told our, our nonprofit board that we were uh, going to be able to utilize this funding to bring uh, people back to work. And Hanona, our nonprofit, was up to the task. Thank you very much to them for, for partnering again with uh, Hawaii Land Trust and Laura Ka'akua to make sure that we could get our, our people back to work. So I don't know exactly how many it was. I think it was over 20, uh, 20 folks that we were able to put back to work in the course of 60 days. And in that 60 day time period, um, many of them were able to clear out the aina in and around uh, Kealaka'i Honua, as, as well as Kapokia and the surrounding areas of the Hau space. And we really, really was able to see how big uh, Kealaka Ihonua uh, is. Um, and with the help of, of an amazing archaeologist, Tanya Lee Gregg from Aina Archaeology, uh, she was able to bring over her, her team of experts to, to really put together some, uh, some things that we needed to take a look at the space, to take a look at the mapping, to take a look at it from different vantage points. So when we, when we utilize this term, e awamuki kuliana, carry out your responsibilities, no matter what it might be, uh, if you're taking care of your ohana, if you're taking care of your kupuna, if you're taking care of aina, uh, if you're taking care of your own space, 
um, that kuliana um, is goes without saying that that's lifetime of work. And so this space is is a lifetime of work for all of us. And so we look forward to to the work at hand. If you can see uh, some of these images that that are right in front of you, um, this particular image in the middle is is from from Kealakaihonua's vantage point looking at Mauka. Um, looking at Mauka, this is known as, um, many of us, we know it, we know it as Mauna Kahalawai. Uh, many of our kupuna and those that in the past know it, know it as Mauna Eka or Eke. Um, the, the amazing planting that have been done over the course of years um, have been done by many volunteers uh, to create um, to create native habitat for, for the space. And um, we're really, really thankful for that, uh, to be able to see native habitat being being grown out there. If you look uh, to the right, there's a small picture, I, be, I believe um, that is a Lu'uwai Ohana. Um, um, I'm not sure exactly uh, if it is or not, but my eyes kind of are not that good. But if you look at the Aina and the much um, areas that they've cleared out, um, the, the process in which they, they've done it is with, with hard, hard backs of work and, and power tools to go ahead and, and make sure that we can see uh, the actual footprint of Kalakai Honua. And then kind of looking again around to those bottom pictures, you're seeing the, the uncovering of Kalakai Honua and um, the amount of space that it, um, or how large it is. And really, really important to, to note um, that uh, at one point we, we thought Kealaka Ihonua, um, you know, was, was only yay big. Um, but after uh, the request from, from Tanya to go ahead and, and move, move the ground cover and to see uh, the exact size, um, many of our mouths dropped because we, we saw how big it was this way and then how big it was this way. So um, that to me tells, uh, tells a lot of all of our kupuna that, that resided there when, when this space was a functioning uh, society. And, and in any functioning society, you have, you have your hale pule or your heiyo as your pico and then all the surrounding areas around it. So um, we look forward to seeing um, how that unfolds moving forward. And here's your next series of images of how we carry out all of our responsibilities. Now, um, that particular image to the left is Kealaka Ihonua looking back from, from um, the, the Puhala or the section of Puhala trees. Um, and if you can see uh, from, from the right to the left how, how large it is, um, just in scale. Uh, the image to the right on the top is looking from, uh, I believe, the top of Kealaka Yohonua, looking out and seeing your Mauna. We all have a Mauna, and our Mauna is uh, either Mauna Kahalawe or Mauna Eke, Eka, or Haleakala. And so Haleakala in the distance is very prominent and, and love uh, seeing. Um, again, looking from uh, Kealakai Honua up Mauka, again, is our other Mauna, Mauna Kahalawai, Mauna Eka. So these, these prominent sites are what embraces um, that vantage point of, of Kealakai Honua and um, how we, we look at it every single time. So this is um, our dear Tanya Lee Gregg um, and her team of Aina Archaeology um, getting, getting a uh, opportunity to do the work there. Um, you know, utilizing 21st century technology today um, allows, allows for all of us as cultural practitioners to see things from a different uh, view plane. And so really, really happy and really, really thankful to Tanya and her team of experts to, uh, that have done some amazing drone footage, um, have been working on the mapping and, and have been able to allow for us to see um, an amazing report thus far about Kealakai Honua. 
um, this particular um, time and this particular space that they they've worked on allows for us to at least move into this this area of dialogue with Shipti uh, moving forward. And I'm not too sure. I'm not too ma about how how to go about that particular process, but kind of like this, we 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 utilize uh, the space and the integrity of our kupuna to be able to have those conversations. So. Uh, thank you to Tanya and her team of Aina Archaeology for providing that information for us so that we can continue to move move forward. And then looking at that that um, space right behind her, this particular pu'u here, this is that one pu'u that I told you about earlier that is really important to, to the space, and that is the, the pu'u known as Mauna Ihi. That is the area where many of our ivi kupuna lay. Um, and are at rest. And um, so we have to thank them and, and acknowledge them for, for without those kupuna at, at Mauna Ihi, um, we probably wouldn't be standing there uh, at that moment in time uh, to be able to conduct ourselves ourselves and uh, malam of this space. Continuing on sharing oli, uh, sharing, sharing hula uh, with all of you. Uh, this is a, a melee that was created back in this year, January of this year, uh, known as Kealakai Honua. And it's an olipahu, and the olipahu are, are very prominent and prevalent within, within the landscape of Heiau. Um, so uh, creating an oli that, that was uh, important enough to be able to hold the space of a pahu or the hold the space of a temple drum to hold the sounds of that um, is nothing uh, nothing um, to go ahead and, and, and put aside. We wanted, I wanted to make sure that we honored those in that particular uh, space. Um, so this particular uh, mele is known as Kealaka Ihonua and it talks about honoring um, all of the different elements that, that visit, that, that are part of that area, as well as honoring those, those spaces that, that um, our kupuna once thrived in. And so when we talk about elements, we are all elemental people, no matter uh, where you come from. All of the elements live within all of us. So um, everything from the winds to the, the rains to the to the Kahawai that visits all the way to the to the shorelines of Kanaloa. Uh, this particular mele allows for that uh, to be able to to be able to be acknowledged. And and then I hope to be able to um, share this particular mele with all of you soon. Um, once we are are all pa'a with it, and uh, we'll be able to go ahead and share it out to to the lehu lehu very shortly. But it says. Um, Velo huluku puna kamakani kilioopu. The ancestors stream in the kilioopu wind. Kaina opuali io kapokia. For kapokia is a loving land. Pa maila ula leo ka ihi kapu. The appealing sounds of those revered and honored. Oh, kalame about that. Keve ka piko o na kua. To our birth cord, the navel of our gods. Kapuo, kapuo, kialaka iho nua. Sacred indeed is our call, kialaka iho nua. The second pauku reads, O ili lua hele kala ku hano hano. Prominently standing, dignified is halia kala. Ka kala na leo i pu ku ia kua. Prayerful voices call upon the gods to assemble. O ka aka alani lo li ka honua. The heavens roll about as land changes. Noho papana kupaya a maho kaaina. For generations, our ancestors admired this land. Kapuo, kapuo, kialaka iho nua. Sacred indeed is our call, kialaka iho nua. Ikawai au au kiha ipe eloko kiha, the mo'o goddess, bathes in the pool at pe eloko or pailoko. Ulua ela kalau ke kahuli puukuma. Kalau ke kahuli grows at puukuma. 
Kawai ho iho ila iho e lei lei ki ki mei. Kawai ho iho ila iho e lei lei spouts forth. Inehe o kanaloa i kaili ili. To the rustling sound kanaloa makes upon the pebbles. Kapuo, kapuo, kialaka iho nua. Sacred indeed is our call. Kialaka iho nua. A apo maila maina lalani pili lua. Our observations learn quickly from Nalalani Pililua, or also known as Milky Way. Kahea i na wa'alala ni kahuna. The wa'alala ni kahuna is called upon. Hua i mai ke po'o i a kane, poured from the source, the waters of kane. Kawai ko kololio i kamuli wai. The water is rushing forward to meet the river mouth. Kapuo, kapuo, kialaka iho nua. Sacred indeed is our call, kialaka iho nua. The very end, Kahea says, no kialaka iho nua. For the leader of this land, this earth, this world. So here are some of the notes that talk about these, these particular verses. We talk about hulukupuna, it refers to the ki lepa lepa, or feather standards that were put for ceremony to honor ho'okui kahi. It's also erected uh, was a kuahu that symbolized the functionality of space and addresses for ho'okupu to be received at kialaka ihonua. Kapokea is the area in which kialaka ihonua heo is at. Uh, ihi ihi kapu is referencing mauna ihi which are the burial sites of our beloved Ivi Kupuna. Kapuo is translated as sacred ceremony, which is under Kapu or a sacred person. Ahelikala is a reference by many Kupuna for Haleakala. They are both honored and are seen clearly when standing upon Kialaka Ihonua or within Kapokia. Puku Iakua is the assembly of gods for certain functions or purpose. Aamaka uh, is to stare in desire or in admiration of. Pe'eloko or Pailoko resides the pool that the Mo'oahine would visit. Many on Maui know this Mo'oahine to be Kihawahine, who is known to visit Pailoko and also resides in the waters of Moku'ula and Moku'hinia in Lele. Kalau ke Kahuli is a name for the ulu tree planted by Hina on Pu'ukuma. Eleile is a spring, is a spring that is fed by Alilele, the waterfall in Waihe'e, which then feeds the waters of Kalepa, Waihe'e, and Kapuna. Kanaloa is the Aku of our ocean brother, our ocean, brother to the Aku Akane, and is part of the very essence of life. The many kinolau manifestations of this aqua is found throughout the ocean of Nakai Ewalu. Na Nalani Pililua, the name of a star in our heavens known today as the Milky Way. Nawa Alalani Kahuna Pukohola was created by Kumu Kahuna Nui John Kiola Lake in the early 90s, which reflected upon his kuliana to adhere to Pule. Loina, Hawaii, and the utmost attention to Kilo. He created a practitioner known as a Kahuna Kakalaleo, those that defined, uh, defended Pule. After much training, uniki rituals or knowledge bound the students were conducted. And in Nahanona Kuliki Opi'ilani, four Kahuna Kakalaleo have gone through and successfully completed the uniki rituals. One was is Uncle Bill Garcia, Kahu Wayne Higa, Auntie Kekoa Inamoro, and Auntie Nanife Paglinoa. Today, the practices, practices of Kahuna Nui are bestowed upon, upon me, and I hold that in high regard. Kaane is the Akua of fresh water, brother to the Akua Kanaloa, and it's part of the very essence of life. The many kinolau manifestations of this akua is found throughout our landscape, both above and below. The kauna of hua i maike po'o'o'i akane 
refers to the very source of our teachings found in the lineage within our halal. Not to be taken lightly and known to be an honor to be a part of this ancestral wisdom. We are fed the wisdom which continues to nourish our minds, hearts, and our souls. We are indeed present and will answer the call of Kalaka Ihonua. And then finally, Pahu are used in ceremonial chants for Heya, which sends vibrations of energy throughout the Pohaku Kupuna. Kyalaka Ihonu is an ancestral Heya which will be rebuilt with the voice of our ancestors we represent and within the Limahana of our Poekanaka. Pehea Ehanai. Here's a big question. How should we act or conduct ourselves within Heyo? Now I write this other this other line down below. Many may see this question as one that we should already know, already understand, but you'd be surprised. So simple question, but with many layers that will take time to understand. So again, let's go through some of those things. Here are some that many may know already, uh, but these are just gentle reminders. Um, hey, yo, reminders. Always ask permission before entering. State your intentions for your kupuna that are listening. Be clear, be clear-minded and ready to receive ho'ailuna. Other words, listen and observe. Talking is not always necessary. Remember who you represent, like your kumu, your ohana, your hanauna, your generations that come after you. In the observations, also understand when it's time for you to leave. Saying mahalo to those kupuna that are just beyond the veil for allowing you for this time and space. No trace. Sorry, to mute somebody here. Okay. Leaving no trace of, of you being there. In other words, Keep the space cleaner than you found it. I think every kumu tells their haumana that. Watch where you step. Heiyao are places of reverence and deserve that respect. Disrespecting and clear disregard for heiyao are not tolerated. Think about your own places of worship. Disrespecting those things are not tolerable. Some ceremonial reminders for all. Be mindful of kapu that have been in place for ceremony, prior to ceremony, and then even after. Learn to address your request to enter. For example, in Oli Kahea. Also learn that if you are denied access to enter ceremony, there may be reasons out of your control to enter. That like you're not makoko. Manawahine will and should be able to address their wailehua appropriately to conduct themselves in ceremony. Once ceremony has begun, the entrance and exits does not exist anymore. So if you leave ceremony due to having to use the restroom, get a drink of water, you'll not be able to return. These are just a, a few of the gentle reminders um, that we have for, for Heyo practices. Yeah. And so all of these ways that we conduct ourselves, um, you know, we, we also are, are always reminded by our, our kumu and by our kupuna that if you don't conduct yourself in these ways, then, then you're going to get answers that you weren't expecting. Yeah. And so, uh, I think many of these kinds of um, ideas, many of these kinds of thoughts are, are passed on uh, to our generations today. Uh, sometimes our, our kiki have to be reminded constantly. Um, and, and that's part of our kuliana. That's part of um, this, this process, is part of this journey. And so, uh, with that, these are some of the ways that we conduct ourselves in and around these kinds of places. And remembering that, that this is our church. 
and remembering that these places exist um, and for all of us to be able to be mindful around the space. And then finally, um, just uh, again, mahalo. He mahalo a mauno ke kama ilio ana. A thank you and then um, a kind um, opportunity for many uh, to, to continue this conversation later for those that would like to. So again, mahalo nui to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs for helping to make this conversation possible. Especially you and Anake Thelma, thank you so much. Um, mahalo nui to Hawaii Land Trust for participating in this journey with us to help re rebuild Kalakai Honua Heiau. Very special ma aloha and mahalo to Laura Ka'akua, Scott Fisher, James Crow, Kia Ikalir for all their work that, uh, that they continue to do aloha aina for future generations to come. And mahalo to Tanya Lee Gregg of Aina Archaeology for helping us begin uh, the process of mapping out Kalakai Honua. We look forward to, to working and engaging again soon. And a really big one to all of our Kaya'ulu for taking the time to learn, think and engage in this space. Again, if you have any questions or would like to go ahead and talk story more about Kalakai Honua or about Pukohola or anything about Heiau, um, or even would like to help support in the efforts of restoration and rebuilding, uh, there's Kumu's uh, email address. You can always reach me there. Uh, I believe um, it'll be uh, available to Auntie Thelma too. So if you'd like to call Oha, and Auntie can always give you my email. Oh, okay. Well, I'd like to take this opportunity again to to um, acknowledge everyone for for taking the time to listen, taking the time to just um, hear hear in the sharing, hear in the new oli that are being um, put out there at Kalakai Honua for the space of Kapokia. Um, look forward to all of the. Uh, meaningful conversations moving forward uh, to seeing this space grow, uh, to seeing it being utilized for, for our Kaya Ulu, and to have many more meaningful discussions with, with our community, um, especially our community of Waihe'e, uh, because this is right in our backyard. Um, and this is really for, for all of them and all of us that, that love this place. Uh, we know it's Maui um, and, and seeing it for the next seven generations. So really, if we think about it, um, we are generation one, yeah? Uh, and for the next seven, um, how do we holomua our teachings? How do we holomua our opportunity to, to see, um, you know, students or little keiki like Noel uh, grow up in these kinds of places, right? Um, so uh, this this is part of our work. This is part of our all of our kuleana. Um, and I remember um, a really amazing gentleman, uh, Uncle Sam Ka'ai. Uh, back when I was 17 years old, um, standing on, on the Mount of Pukola and about to receive Ava, it came with a caveat. It came with a, a uh, commitment um, between, between uh, you and uh, Akua. And uh, the question, was, uh, will you do everything in your power for the next seven generations to make sure that you continue to teach what you do? Yeah. Um, and at 17 years old, I, I never know what I was doing uh, the next day. I was just following what, what my dad was telling me to do, uh, not knowing that this, this pathway was kind of already chosen uh, for me. And so, um, I continue to do, do this kind of work. I continue to, to enhance this kind of ike to my students, as well as all of those that I can share with, uh, with, the, with the thought and the framework in mind that we're building practitioners for a lifetime. And that's really, really my main uh, focus. So um, thank you everybody uh, for, for that opportunity and for uh, having this discussion. Mahalo and Titama and those at Oha for, for allowing for this space to happen. Kumu, thank you so very, very much. My heart is so filled with love for you and for all that you've done. It's awesome. Thank it's you. awesome. Thank you so much. 
So um, I'd like to call on my um, immediate uh, supervisor, Misty Holly Oreo, to um, say something for us. Mahalo Nui Kako for attending today. Um, you know, it, thank you Kumu for an informative workshop. We, I think we all learned a lot. Mahalo Nui Kako. Mahalo Kumu. Mahalo Oi. Nalela ki aloha nui a kakoa pau. Um, hope you guys have a great evening tonight. Um, look forward to seeing all of you folks that are here in Maui uh, sometime in the near future. And if uh, you're you're on another moku or on another uh, on another continent, um, hopefully we'll get to see each other soon as well. Kia aloha nui a kakoa pau. Aloha.